Venezuela, Jazz of the Red once opined, shows that there is another way, and that way is socialism. Some on the Labour left and nearly all of Britain's small band of Marxists cheered such sentiments. These days, even its cheerleaders don't hold it up as a socialist blueprint. Venezuela is now the only failed state in modern history to sit on some of the world's largest oil reserves. That's a unique combination. Despite all that oil wealth, its currency is worthless. Its inflation is so high nobody can measure it, but it is over 1 million percent. Yep, 1 million. And 10 percent of the population, that's about 3 million people, have fled to another country to escape persistent food and medical shortages and human rights abuses. Much of the remaining 90% live in fear of rampant crime. Caracas is the most dangerous city in the world. Griding poverty, constant hunger, and the knock on the door in the middle of the night. In many parts of the country, the self-styled socialist state now can't even provide the most basic of health or education services. So you can understand why Dear Jezza no longer holds up Venezuela as a socialist poster child. Didi doesn't say anything about it at all. <clears throat> but it's socialism to blame for turning what was once the richest country in Latin America, at one stage it was only 13% poorer than Britain, into an economic basket case. Or have these imperialist Yankee gringos been up to their old tricks again? He is former mayor of London and a friend of Venezuela's Bol Bolivarian revolution, Ken Livingston with his take of the week. Remember me? I used to be the mayor of London. And one of my greatest achievements was providing cheap travel for the poorest. I was able to do that because my friend, Hugo Chavez, who was then president of Venezuela, cut the price of oil and that allowed us to subsidise the fares. Chavez always worked to improve the poor all over the world and that was one of the most wonderful things he did. It reduced poverty and gave people opportunities. Of course, the USA never liked socialism. They undermined Chavez from the very beginning, trying to get rid of him. And now, under Trump, they've imposed sanctions, as well as fueling inflation. That's cut back on the food available, undermined their economy, and caused a lot of pain to people. But they're not giving in. Trump's intentions are clear. He wants regime change. And he recently endorsed the announcement that the chair of the National Assembly in Venezuela um, was the new president. A bit like Jeremy Corbyn announcing in Parliament that he was the new Prime Minister. I doubt if Trump would support that. But all of this is causing insecurity and even the prospect of US military intervention seems to be still on the table. Of course, laughably, America claims this is all about democracy, but all it's really about is taking control of the resources of other countries and making a great profit out of them. Venezuela's got the largest oil reserves in the world, and Trump wants those coming under the control of an American company. The trouble is, every American intervention leads to violence, massive loss of life, and that's not acceptable. We should all stand up against these appalling policies. We don't want to see another Chilean dictatorship in Latin America. And a thanks to the B Bakery afternoon tea bus team. <laughs> and a shout out to Gary the driver. Ken has arrived in his red bus. Welcome to the programme. So as the biggest danger facing Venezuela is American imperialism. What do you make of that? Well, I'd say that was a strange take on uh, what's happening there and the suffering that the people are going through and the imp imp how impoverished they've become just be through sheer incompetence of the leadership of that country. Alan? Uh, well, it's not just America, of course. There's two dozen countries who have recognised 
a guy who is a democratic socialist, by the way. He's the leader of a party called Popular Will that is our sister, but Labour Party's sister party that's affiliated to the international, uh, to the Socialist International. So this is, I'm afraid, dictatorship versus democracy. And Trump is one of a whole host of countries, including liberal Canada and including most of Latin American countries, who this guy's record, Maduro's record, you know, they, it's now UN have said 12,000 people imprisoned because of their protests against the government, 8,000 people killed. And this is a guy who's actually in charge of drug cartels that's putting co cocaine on the streets of London. Ken? Well, if all that's true, it will be appalling. But what I've watched is America's imposed sanctions. Those sanctions mean that the oil corporation that, uh, that uh, Chavez imposed when he nationalised it is losing £11 billion a year. Now, that's an appalling impact on their economy. When were and the US oil sanctions imposed? I can't remember when it started. Well, but I'll tell you when. All right, good. They were imposed this week. No, no, that was the no, latest. No, no, there, until then there have been no oil sanctions on Venezuela. Indeed, the United States, until this week, was Venezuela's biggest, biggest import yeah. exporter of oil. The 600,000 barrels um, of oil a day were exported from Venezuela but, to America. There have been no oil sanctions. There have been sanctions on Venezuela, just like there have been on Cuba. What else were there? Like there are on Nicaragua, like there are okay. on Iran. And these are illegal tell me what under they were. international law. Uh, tell me what... So the Venezuelan economy mm. has shrunk by 50% yes. in five years. Mm. What US sanctions caused that? Well, in the first place, there was the collapse of the oil price. That was damaging. That's not but a sanction. But American sanctions then what did were they? damage. Everybody. I don't know. I've been retired pensioner. I've got staff. No, no, you've there. been Maybe. saying. No, no, Stu, yeah. this is quite important because as we speak mm. tonight, children in Venezuela are starving to yes. death. So you say it's you. say it's sanctions, you, they wouldn't be but starving I'm, I'm, to death. Well, which sanctions? They are, they've had sanctions for years. Oh, and no, this is, no, they have. And I'm sorry. I know that because that's what the, the, the Venezuelan sorry. ambassador told me. Well, that, he, he may tell you me. that, but, yes. he, but let me tell you, the first sanctions mm. were introduced in 2015 mm. by President Obama. Mm. Not for years. Mm. 2015. And they were aimed then solely at regime members mm. suspected of corruption and human rights abuses. That no. was all. Their assets no. were frozen. That cannot bring down an economy, nor create hyperinflation. So I ask you again, what U.S. sanctions have caused this collapse in the economy? American sanctions are illegal under international law. They're illegal, the sanctions against Iran. You're not answering the question. No, I... I the question I, is what sanctions could have caused this. Sanctions <clears throat> against individual members of the regime mm. Mm. who are suspected of corrupt mm. practices and human rights abuses could not cause an economy to collapse by 50%. Well, I, all I've got is the information I had from the Venezuelan ambassador that the sanctions imposed on the main oil company, publicly owned in Venezuela, okay. is costing their economy $11 billion a year. There was not a single trading sanction mm on Venezuela. You could export mm. or import anything other than arms. There were no restrictions. Well, and at the same time, mm. Venezuela got $80 billion in loans from China and mm. Russia. So why did the economy collapse? Because you've had in the first place a collapse of oil prices and then you had the American sanctions and you may have got Which information there that says there have been sanctions. But when the Venezuelan ambassador here in London talks to me about those sanctions, I believe what he's which, saying. Which you can those name. are his family. They're people out there, as you said, children are dying of starvation. Children are dying because they can't get the, the yeah. medical imports that would have been coming if America hadn't imposed it. And this isn't but, nothing But you've new. not been able to establish mm. any American sanctions until this week. They did introduce oil mm. sanctions this week, but that mm. can't complace the collapse in the economy. Let me uh, suggest some other reasons why Venezuela is a basket case. There was random confiscation of private properties and company mm. that scared off investors. The state oil company is now run by a general. Mm. He's a Maduro crony. 
He knows nothing about oil. Mm. Oil output is now down to 1940 levels. The state grabbed the water and electricity companies. There's now huge shortages of both. Price controls killed the supply of food and medicines. Reckless fiscal and monetary policies destroyed the currency and created hyperinflation. That's what made it a basket case. No. When Chavez came to power, he was elected in 1998, only one um, Venezuelan in 10 could read. He created a, an amazing improvement. People got decent education, they got health care. There was a massive improvement in the quality of life. And then Chavez died, Maduro took over, and he has been subject to America destabilizing his regime. And they've done that all over Latin America. I remember well, I, I, when have, Kissinger flew out to Chile in 1973 and helped to persuade the military to have a coup, which then led to decades of a dictatorship. You, you, I, I agree. Look, the mm. Americans' reputation in Latin America is probably hard to defend on a lot yeah. of areas. I'm trying to establish what's been happening in Venezuela mm. at the moment. And you say Chavez always wanted to help the poor. And yeah. I think you think Maduro has mm. wanted to help the poor. But the Chavez and Maduro families mm. have enriched themselves by mm. billions. Yes. Billions. But when Chavez... Have they? Well, I don't know. I mean, I have no access to their accounts. But when Chavez came well, to London, Maduro came <laughs> with him. And it was Chavez who said, we're going to give you money so that you can actually no, cut fares for the unemployed. The but... It was Maduro that I organised and negotiated that with. And I, I was struck by the fact these were two right. decent men who cared about poor people, not just in their own country, but around the world. The Chavez family now owns 100,000 mm. acres in 17 properties mm. in Venezuela. Mm. He came from nothing. Yes, he He's came enriched. Uh, his family has enriched it, it's, oh, when itself. When Chavez died, he wasn't fabulously rich. His daughter is reported to be the richest woman in Latin America. Yeah, but that's not his fault. I mean, Chavez... Well, she, she, she thinks she did that by herself. No, but when you look at Chavez, he did not enrich himself. He came into power to help the poorest, and that's what he I did right up that. to his death. But then it all went pear-shaped. You it's can't blame worse. Chavez if it's one of his daughters then enriches herself. Well, I don't think she did it just by herself. His Treasury Secretary mm. from the year 2007 to 2010... His Treasury Secretary, mm. Chavez's Treasury mm. Secretary, was discovered to have a multi-million dollar bank account mm. with HSBC mm. in Switzerland. Mm. Where did he get that from? Well, all across the world, politicians are often corrupt. Yeah, but this is a socialist regime yeah, but that you've held up. Yeah, and I will defend it because I don't want to see America overthrowing it okay. and then have a civil war that might lead to hundreds of thousands being killed and disruption but for no years to come. no one wants to see that, Ken. No one wants to see that. You said that this um, a very brave guy from the National Assembly, mm. who's been declared by the National Assembly as the president, mm. in line with Venezuela's mm. constitution, mm. you said it was like Corbyn declaring himself prime minister. Mm. It's nothing like that. What, the, what Maduro did was set up a, 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 a constitutional assembly mm. that had the power to dissolve the National mm. Assembly. He set up, that's like, like an alternative someone parliament. setting up, a, that is an alternative to Parliament. No. And the guy who's standing mm. up to this is a democratic socialist. Yeah. And you can't defend what is happening there, the people that are disappearing, yeah. the drug cartel, the fact that it is Maduro that's at the centre of the cocaine trade. And it's well, the, if that his, is true, he should go to prison. But that, I'm not believing that sort of propaganda. Star, no. No. Read, no. Read, I don't read the Morning Star, I read the Guardian. Read what's out there. Read the Guardian. Read anything mm. that's out there. You read the Guardian, you are in a sad state, but read anything that's out there and see for yourself. Why are you defending Look, this regime? Because, because I think Maduro that, got that. elected in a free and open election oh, it's, last year. And yeah. the international South American body that monitors elections in South America What's said called? it was fair. I can't remember. It's about six names. I'll tell you what it's yeah. called. It's called CELA. Yeah. C-E-E-L-A. Mm. It's a zombie election monitor. Its purpose is to make fraudulent elections look good. It doesn't even have a website. The Lima Group, mm. made up of every, yeah. almost every Latin American country there is, the EU, the Human Rights Inter-American mm. Commission, Spain, mm. Peru, and Canada, mm. not exactly left-wing, right-wing countries, they all said the election was rigged and fraudulent. But there's no evidence of that because but people stood against it. They didn't win. You yes. can't 
defend it now. When you see what is happening, and you're right, you want to protect the poor, you want to protect the people, mm. you cannot defend it. And if people need to now go in and say, where is all that money going? We're not going to take mm. it away from the country. We're going to put it in a safe space so it cannot go to you as an individual or your family mm. or your generals or people that are propping you up and keeping yeah. you there. You must remove And it will go back to anyone try exactly. and feed 4.1 million people anyone malnourished. should go to prison. But all my life, I've watched as America intervenes, whether it was Vietnam, all and across that's in the past. That's in the past. This no, no, that's now. exactly what the, we've had all through my life. America overthrowing any democratically elected government that, that starts to nationalise things and uh, have an impact on American corporations. That's all this but is about. No, America's never now, gone to war for right. democracy we since Roosevelt came to defend us. Uh, Ken, you, your points about... America's history in Latin America are well taken, and you've put up a, a sturdy defense of Venezuela t uh, uh, tonight uh, uh, among some attack. But I do want to put a serious point to you, and it is done in seriousness. This economy, the Venezuelan mm. economy, has collapsed. Three million people have fled the country. Mm. Poverty is endemic. Mm. Starvation is widespread. The most basic necessities are now unavailable. There is indentured labor in the southeast where people are forced to work in mines under gangs supported by the military. Government goons commit human rights atrocities. And you cannot bring yourself to utter a word of criticism. What kind of socialist well, are um, you? I'm sure that he has made mistakes. Every politician makes mistakes. But what we've also got... 200 super rich families have dominated Venezuela for virtually a century. They're now included and they are now funding, they are now funding all these attempts to overthrow that democratically elected but government. The super rich families now are the Maduras and the Chavez's. Yes. Now, they might have got a bit of money, that's fine. Oh, but right. the reality is Venezuela was a corrupt regime, 200 families that owned all the wealth. Okay. Under Chavez and his successor, they have shifted things. They may have made mistakes, and if there is any of these allegations of corruption too, yes, he should go to prison. All but right. we shouldn't allow America to keep intervening in other countries. And that point is well taken. Thank you. Ken, thank you.